Hmm, what should I hunt today? Oh, I don't know, maybe not that. Okay, well that was a pretty good impression, but what about... <laughs> I'm not hunting you! Though you do seem like a bit of a danger to those humans. Yes, you all just saw what you think you did. Monster Hunter as a franchise is an incredibly storied series of games with cult popularity in the West until the release of Monster Hunter World, when it became significantly more popular over here. That said, they've always been extremely popular in Japan, and while the main reason for this is the games themselves, let's just say it's definitely not hurt by their marketing strategy. Many of you remember one such face from the English Monster Hunter commercials for Try a number of years ago, featuring a man who was referred to only as Iron beard. This is not done with special effects and post, that is a genuine model of a dead Logiacris head in the trunk of that truck. And, well, honestly, a lot of this doesn't even feel scripted, it just feels like they drove around with this doing random things with people's genuine reactions to seeing it and conversing with Ironbeard, and I love it. What do you think? It's big and scary and it stinks. It's me trying to catch his da. He's a big and he's like 80 feet. Oh, really? Yeah, I wouldn't want to get close to him. Oh. <laughs> I want to keep my head. <laughs> That's my sword right there. Up! Thrust! And then you bring it around and down on his head! Thrust it down! Ah! I might be able to take down a smaller creature like this, but then that beast is going to call in this other beastie over here. And I'm telling you, it's a whole amazing ecosystem out there. There are eight of these specifically, of the Ironbird commercials, as well as a behind-the-scenes video on the main Monster Hunter YouTube channel itself, even to this day, and each one is honestly as hilarious as the last. There is an absolutely indisputable humor to them that I totally love, and, well, put simply, if you haven't seen these before, they are undoubtedly worth your time. These English ones, though, are relatively known throughout the community for the most part, and many hunters have seen them, though I'm hoping enough of you out there haven't before that this is a revelation for you and you get to experience them for the first time as a result of hearing about them here. That said, that's just the start, because the Monster Hunter television ads in Japan are even sillier than this, and I love them just the same. You saw the one that we started with, that was a commercial for Monster Hunter World starring actor Takayuki Yamada, and he goes just absolutely unhinged, just imitating monsters from the game with disturbing accuracy, I might add. He also did another commercial for Monster Hunter World in which he gives his friends a gift of money for New Year's, and well, on it, just watch it for yourself. <laughs> If your first Monster Hunter game was World, you may be thinking that the reason you weren't aware of these things is just because they happened before you were properly into Monster Hunter, if they were before your time, for example. But what if I told you that there was a song by singer Ken Matsudaira with a full-on music video created for Sunbreak, the recent expansion, literally months ago, where he redoes the lyrics to one of his own songs to be Sunbreak related while even holding a greatsword at one point, and, well, it, it's actually extremely catchy. I dare you to listen to this and not bob your head along with it. Viva Sunbreak, motherfuckers! On the flip side, you may be thinking that they didn't start making these commercials until Try, but oh, again, you'd be quite wrong. What you see in the background right now is the beginning of a commercial for Freedom Unite, which is a clear riff on the Ghost Hunters series. Just a bunch of people in a truck going to an abandoned forest in the night, Nargakuga sound effects just quietly playing in the distance. <laughs> And, well, they're essentially just trying to get footage proving that it exists. Around 40 seconds in, they find a steaming pile of, I'm not going to finish that sentence, but one of them tastes it, makes a coughing sound like they're disgusted, and then somehow identifies both the creature's species and the fact that it's a little bit small. Then they, um, th they do this. <laughs> Hold on.
あの音楽でナルがおびき寄せるわけですねあいやイサムがロック好きなだけだ This is a two minute long TV spot. Two minutes. Do you know how much money it takes to air a commercial that is two minutes long? Just consider the fact that most commercials are 30 seconds long, yet they managed to create this whole thing, and it is just an incredible parody, a work of satire, and a commercial all in one. On top of which, they say that Monster Hunter will be coming to the West, and at the end, they link a website. Sadly, the website no longer exists, but having done some research on it, it was actually an interesting thing within itself. The Encyclopedia Gigantica. It was a virtual book written by the four. Four top Japanese monster hunters. No idea how they quantified who the top ones were, but that's the description. And they were chosen by Capcom itself to help create this resource full of tutorials and descriptions and just background information on the universe of the game itself. The entire goal of this website was for the Western world to read it as a way to prepare for the release of Freedom Unite in the West. This is a really cool concept, and it shows that even back then, Capcom realized that Monster Hunter could be really popular in the West with the right marketing push behind it with the right resources. And they definitely did try. Was something that I think a lot of hunters would love to have even today. An online resource by hunters handpicked by Capcom to attempt to teach them the basics of hunting and the lore of Monster Hunter to people who are just starting out, rather than just sticking your face into a Monster Hunter game for the first time and dying on repeat, not being quite sure what's going on. A really neat idea backed up by a fantastic commercial, too. I've been tracking this particular one for about six weeks. It's not just the physical work of getting him, it's the mental endeavor that you have to go through to figure him out. There's four or five hours of struggle with him. This is real. Hey, now that's me hunting this guy right there, just a day or two ago. It's not real teeth, it's like hard fingernails. Right. Sure. That's how his outside is. Nice. It's hard. And that's my grandpa. Honestly, this is sort of weird to talk about as a concept because more than anything, I just want to shut up, not say anything, and just show you these Monster Hunter commercials back to back on repeat so we can share in the glory of them. Because even me talking over them takes away some of the sillier moments. But I guess just use this as a sort of notice, as me saying, hey, these hilarious things are out there. Go out and watch them because they are just so good. They are worth your time, unbelievably so. I guess more than anything, this is just sort of an attempt from my end to give some appreciation. And get some more eyes on what are genuinely some of the most creative commercials that I've ever seen to advertise a video game. And I just, I want more of them, okay? I want Capcom to keep doing them. I want to reinforce this type of behavior because, goddamn, are they actually really good? I'm tired of things like shooter games releasing trailers with super cheesy, corny voiceover as if they are the characters walking around surprised at everything that's happening. No one believes it. It isn't fun. It's just sort of weird. And we're all just sort of awkwardly sitting there watching it. And while the action trailers for Monster Hunter itself are really great. It is lovely to see the new monsters that will get coming out one at a time, with little hints towards ones that haven't even been properly announced yet. Few, if any, video game advertising attempts before have piqued my interest as much as this absolute treasure trove of Monster Hunter commercials. I've struggled to find some of the Japanese ones as well. I don't know their Japanese names, and so it's hard for me to search for them, but even the ones that I have found have been incredibly enjoyable. And again, even past that, the English Monster Hunter YouTube channel has eight, I repeat, Eight commercials for a um, month. Commercials for Monster Hunter Tri featuring this Iron Beard. Every one of them is funny in their own right, and every one of them is actually worth watching. It is absolutely nuts that any of these exist, not to mention how much of a theme it has become for the series having these crazy, silly little ads, and I love it. As someone who lives for the sillier parts of Monster Hunter itself, who loves carrying around heads on sticks and putting on the silliest voice option that I can find, carrying eggs around and killing small monsters, I love the, the just hilarious things that this game allows you to do. I really do. And these commercials just do something for me that video game commercials never really do. As a base concept, at its core, the Monster Hunter games are serious, and so you would expect them to have serious commercials. They are games where you kill big scary monsters, rip off their parts one at a time, then use those parts to make bigger and better weapons and armor to kill scarier monsters and help protect villages by removing threats. But these commercials are just so self-aware of how silly that concept can be when compared to our real world. They treat it seriously within the dialogue while just creating these intensely silly situations and I can't, I can't handle it. This is my favorite kind of advertising. All I'm looking for is a simple burger made out of monster flesh. They have a Subway, Chinese, Mexican, everything right over there. Oh, right if, in the food for this so we could go, do you think they've got a large grill where I could cook this thing? No, I don't. Sorry, sir, we cannot cook monster meat. What's wrong? You don't like a challenge. 
This is the type of advertising that works as far as I'm concerned. There's advertising that makes you aware of a product and that is serviceable, it does the job, but then there is advertising that makes you appreciate a product before you've even gotten it. It makes you laugh, it makes you feel something, and that is the type of thing that you're way more likely to remember, it's more likely to have an effect on you in the long term. And Monster Hunter has absolutely been able to nail that over the years. Of course, we have our more regular trailers too, but every once in a while, one of these ads will pop up and it just makes my day when I see one that I hadn't before. What else is there to say really other than again if you haven't seen these before go and watch them when you're done here because they are just so worth the time especially if you like our kind of humor here on the channel because they're just silly shit in the best of ways honestly. I hope you've enjoyed a bit of a look back on the weirder ads that Monster Hunter has ever made. I know I have. Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more and most importantly ladies and gentlemen until next time. Stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.